Yeah, read to her letters, numbers, colors, sizes, and shapes. Make your home or her bedroom a temple of black beauty. And what I mean by that, she should see nothing on the walls in that house that don't look like her. No toys, no pictures, everything she watches on television must look like her. Black children are going to be an alien everywhere they go in this society. We cannot afford for them to be an alien in their own homes. And too many homes that I go into, our children even feel like strangers in their own home because their parents got pictures of white Jesus, Marilyn Monroe, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. They, none of the pictures look anything like them. The cartoons don't look anything like them. The toys that they play with don't look anything like them. The characters in the books don't look anything like them. Make sure you baptize her into her blackness. Remember, at that age, she's going to learn more about what she sees than anything else. The eyes are the most important sensory organ in the ears as well, but especially them eyes. She's going to learn her world through seeing, touching, and hearing. And you got to make sure everything she sees, touches, and hears is racially affirming to her and her complexion. Very important that you do that. But I would read to her every day. I would, I would start teaching her letters and colors and sizes right now because our children are far more advanced than they give them credit for. Far more advanced. Your daughter can start, will be able to memorize letters and stuff by the time she's six months. She could be reading by the time she's two years old, literally. Okay. So you just got to make sure you stay on that. Don't do the ghetto program, which is TV and toys. Uh-uh. No, we're we're, we're going to be doing books and basic facts. Get all the flashcards you can. You can go to the dollar store and load up on every type of flashcards you need from the colors to the sizes, to the shapes, to the states. That's what you want to do at that age. Get them facts under her belt because at that age, from now until three, and then of course until five, that's the perfect time to teach a child all the facts because their brains suck it up real quick. And language as well. Language. You know, that's why we want to give her the books and the reading and you want to read to her and show her the words and show her the letters and things like that. Make her playtime in her academic life all about academics so it's fun to learn see the problem with us the reason why a lot of our children don't have fun learning we never included learning in their leisure activity their leisure activity had nothing to do with reading their leisure activity had nothing to do with writing nothing to do with math so when they go to school it's boring and it feels like punishment because all we do is give them footballs and basketballs and ipads and TikTok. And because we kept academics out of fun, our children associate academics with pain and they associate academics with pleasure. One of the biggest differences between mentally gifted students and other students, one of the biggest difference between advanced placement children and other children is the gifted children and the advanced placement children. They see school as fun, as fun. Other children see it as a burden. Make sure your daughter sees academics as fun as well. Thank you so much for the download. I appreciate you. God bless you. All right. Take care, beautiful. Good evening, Sister Alicia. How you doing, beautiful? Hey, I'm doing all right. Thank you so much, Hansel. All is well. How's Minneapolis treating you? Uh, not. I mean, I'm doing well, but there's a lot of uh, police. Uh, yeah, the police still killing black folks like it's going out of style up there. Yeah, they murdered my uncle um, in 2017. Um, Sorry to hear that. Lock up, so. Yeah, it's it sounds it's starting to be like business as usual here. It's just you know starting to be the new normal. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Actually, <laughs> yes, indeed. Go um, right ahead with your question, beautiful. So my question is, um, so my nephew, um, they said that he's autistic, and um, we didn't know right away. Uh, we didn't see the signs right away, and so how old was he when he said he was autistic? Uh, 
Um, five. Kind of young. How old is he now? Well, he's five. It, it was this year. Um, and we do see a lot of signs and things going on with him. So we, we're pretty confident of the diagnosis, but we're going to wait and see what the school says and all that. But Please wait. Is, Please wait. Because yeah. remember now, in order to qualify for special ed, there must be disability plus impairment in learning. So even let's say he is autistic for the sake of conversation. He's autistic. He cannot qualify, nor should he qualify, nor should you want him to qualify for special ed service unless that autism affects his ability to learn in the classroom. You follow me? Yeah. We don't want him with an IEP if he don't have trouble learning. Special ed is for learning. If he's only autistic, autism is not a learning disability. It's an impairment in communication. Verbal and nonverbal, spoken and received, expressive and receptive. So yes. let's say he has that. But if he gets in that class and he tears through that academic work and he's at the top of the class, why would there be any conversation about an IEP? Right. Right. That makes sense. Now, if he needs social skills training, then I would probably look for that outside of the school setting through the Association of Black Psychologists or through a private therapist or a licensed clinical social worker. He can get his social skills training from another professional. But I would not put my autistic child in special ed just so he can get social skills training because he's not going to get much of it anyway as a black child in Minneapolis public schools. So if he has issues with, you know, social skills, do you think that that kind of bleeds over in, into the area, the realm of like trying to teach him something and him not picking it up? We will not know until we see, which means this is going to take me back to the previous caller or two callers ago. Remember, I told her we want to be very careful not to try to predict problems. When you try to predict problems, you make problems. I'm not I, I never try to predict and I'm an expert evaluator. I never try to predict problems for a child. You, you follow me? I want him in the class and I want him to show us what he can do. And if y'all start seeing severe problems the first week or second week, so be it. Mm -hmm. Call an IEP team meeting and say we need him evaluated for autism. We believe that his autistic symptoms is affecting his ability to learn in the class. But to try to make that decision before you have given him a chance to show you is unfair to him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and so that leads me into my, my next question. It's a great segue. So the next question is, Say it works out where they say he, he does his autism is affecting um is affecting his learning now and they come Well first of all, I don't care what they say. You better believe it as the parent or the auntie. Right. right. Because schools will tell you anything. You know, these right, teachers right. today, the minute a child struggles, they want them tested for special ed. My whole career I've had to fight white women to tell them that this child has no business getting tested for special ed. Well, he's not picking up as fast as the other children. He don't have to. He's not the other children. He might be a slow learner. He might be a step behind. He might be developmentally delayed, but he doesn't have a learning disability. How about you try teaching him first before you send him to me for an evaluation? You see that? So I don't care if the teacher says... He's having trouble learning. Y'all better believe it yourself. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's a black boy. Don't yeah. put hindrances on him that he did not prove to you he has. Got it. Got it. it, it so, uh, uh, so I guess what our worry is, too, is that they always say earlier, the earlier you intervene, the better. That is not true for autism. That is true for cancer. That is true for diabetes. That is true for blindness. That is true for heart disease. That is true for kidney failure. That is true for HIV AIDS. That is not true for autism because autism has no cure. 
It literally has no cure, not no known cure at this time. So whether you diagnose autism at three, diagnose autism at five, or diagnose autism at seven, he's the same child. There's nothing that's going to change the fact that he's autistic. And I would even argue the opposite is true. And what I mean by that is this. Label that boy as autism. Put him in an autistic support class in kindergarten. So he's going to an autistic support class. But he's not autistic. Y'all simply got manipulated into signing him up for the autistic support class. After one year, guess what? Your nephew will be sounding autistic, talking autistic, acting autistic, because he's going to pick up the behaviors in the other autistic children. So let me ask you a question. Which way do you think would provide you a better opportunity to determine if he's autistic or not? Being around regular kids in the regular class or being around autistic kids in the autistic class? Which setting do you think gives you a better opportunity to really discern if he's autistic or not? I think the first one, the option you just said. The, the, the regular the classroom. Setting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you let them put him in an autistic support classroom. He's going to behave that way. Exactly. You won't know what's him and what's social learning. You will not know what 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 is he doing is simply him and what is he doing as a re, as a as a reaction of picking up on what all the other children is doing. Now, how would you tackle the echolalia, like just repeating things that he's hearing, but he's not really processing, like processing this. So like when you talk, it's like, you know, it's a transaction when you say something, I respond. Like grasping that. Is, that. is that still something that speech delayed kids can have issues with? And it Does he get speech? I'm sorry, you say that? Does okay. he currently get speech therapy? Yes. Okay. What did the speech therapist say about that issue? They're, it's just, he's, they're just working with him on it, trying to get him out of, you know, doing that. I'm going to say this. Most speech and language children, and I'm not a speech pathologist, but most speech and language children in our community, they get horrible service. They get horrible service. They only get about 30 minutes a week, if that. They might get an hour a week, if that. If I were you, I would contact the African American Speech and Language Therapist Association. And I would get some referrals from them for some speech pathologists in your area. And I would pay out of pocket. You could check with insurance. They might cover it. But I would pay out of pocket for him to get an extra hour a week of speech therapy. If we rely on Minneapolis public schools to correct his speech issues, we might be waiting for the rest of his life. Do you feel me? Uh, yeah. yeah get him some extra therapy. My youngest daughter, who's 12 now, when she was about five or six, her mother had her at this Quaker school that I didn't agree with, but she's a bourgeois, so she did it anyway. But the white folks up there said they thought my daughter had a speech and language impairment. I told my daughter's mother she's not getting tested by the school. We're going to get a private speech pathologist to test her. And if she's determined to have a 25% delay, because that's normally what they look for, we're going to pay for private speech therapy. She's not getting it from the school. And this was at an expensive private school. I still didn't want it from them because I know how horrible speech services are given to black children. Occupational therapy services are given to black children and physical therapy services are given to black children in the public schools. Those are three very poorly given services for black children in public school. So if you want it done right, you want to pay for it out of pocket. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you another question. Has he ever had an audiological evaluation? Yeah, he did. He went through everything when he was younger. He went through everything. We were trying to figure out what was going on because we started seeing signs of like delays and just, you know, um, delays in processing and other stuff and so we just we got everything done and everything came back he can hear you know all of that um everything's working it's just that um that's what they came okay. up with saying that it was and let me also long. say this to you there is no therapy like time itself 
I'm not saying wait forever. But at five years old, we need to be kind of patient with him. He's five. Okay. You know, they offered a, they offered another therapy too, where they said it was a rigorous therapy for kids if he you know if they have autism, where they just they just drill him eight hours a day. Do you think that's good, a good idea? Like it's a I'm gonna tell you what I I'm, I'm I'm gonna give you my I'm gonna give you first of all when they use the word rigorous. They don't really mean it. That's just a word they use with black parents to sucker you into signing your child up for the program. They don't care about him. They care about the money that comes with him. They don't care about him. They care about the money that comes with him. Calling the program rigorous means nothing. That's just the way to sucker you in. And once you get him labeled as autistic, just so he can access that program, I want you to call me back up and tell me how effective that program is. You're probably going to be telling me it's not what you thought it would be because it's all about the money. Yeah, it's called ABA therapy. Yeah, yeah. Applied behavior analysis. I know all about it. And it's only as good as the particular therapist operating that particular program. It's a hit and miss. Okay. It's a hit and miss. What are the autistic symptoms that y'all seeing? So the echolalia, um, sometimes he's in his own little world talking, um, and, and we have to get him out of the world and get, get him back to talking with us or paying attention to us, but he'll go into his own little world. Uh, the way he, um, like, sometimes he, he'll communicate by repeating phrases off of the cartoons, and then we'll have to think about what was going on in the cartoon to understand what he's trying to say to us. Okay. You know I'm, I, mean? I'm, I follow you. I'm going to say this. If y'all do decide to make them autistic for the purposes of accessing that program, the minute you come to determine that he's no longer autistic, make sure you exit him from special ed immediately. All you have okay. to do is call an IEP meeting and say he no longer needs these services. He can learn in a regular classroom. Please exit him immediately and make sure you sign the papers to exit him. Because what schools okay. will do is they will tell parents we're going to exit him, but he's still on the paperwork for special ed, which means they're still getting paid. If you don't sign that oh. exit form, they're still getting money for the child. Oh, good point. Thanks for mentioning that. Okay, yeah, just know that. that you can exit him because oh. I, I, I kind of feel like you want to give it a shot. I'm not going to tell you not to. I don't think I would. But if you decide to do it, just know. The minute this is no longer working out or the minute y'all realize that he doesn't need that, you can call an IEP meeting and exit him from the service. Okay, yeah, we're going to do what you said. We're going to wait and just send them to school and not say anything and let them tell us so that they're not biased, you know, so it's not a biased observation that they give us. Right. Um, but when, when, I, I'll, I'll be really quick. One more thing. Um, so we were told if he is autistic, because he he hasn't, you know, there's some certain skills that you have to learn by the age of six, and if you don't learn them, then it's then you'll never learn it. Is that true? No, I never heard of nothing like that in my life. That's ridiculous. Okay, because that really has certain us, skills. Like, if you don't learn at six, you won't learn them. There's people yeah. who didn't learn to read until they were sixty years old. So what skills? If you don't learn at six. You won't learn them. I'm not aware. If you ain't walking by six, you can still be walking by 16. So what skills are they talking about that if you don't learn them? See, that's the type of fear mongering they love to do with black parents to try to coerce us into signing our kids up for these programs so they can get their money. There is no skill I know of you will not learn if you don't learn it by six. Yeah, I was wondering, they, they told us it was a speech portion of it, and we were so totally disillusioned when we heard that. Nah, that's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Well, thank you so much for confirming that. They gave us a lot of hope and helps us to, you know, feel like we can still, you know, work with Don't him. Don't let them hustle that five-year-old boy. Don't let them hustle yeah. him. Give him a chance in that regular class and let's see what he can do when he walks into kindergarten. We will do. Scouts on our promise. All right. And you got my number so you can reach out anytime. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Now. 
black parents, before I go to the next call, black parents, please slow down. Slow down. Stop looking. They didn't brainwashed us into getting all of our kids labeled before kindergarten. They, they literally got us thinking we are helping our children by labeling them before kindergarten. Look, look how paranoid we are. I'm not talking about the callers. I'm just speaking in general, y'all. Please, please. Don't fall for the okie doke, black parents. This is all about money. Money, 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 money. Let me go to Brother Terrell in D.C. That's why the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is on its way, brothers and sisters. FDMG, we game changing. Okay, he didn't pick up. Uh, uh. Let's go to Chicago one time. Good evening, Sister Brooklyn. How are you? I'm great. How are you? How's Chicago treating you? <laughs> it's treating me pretty good. They still pushing us out with the migrants? What happened? Uh, she might have been dating a migrant. My bad. Hello. Peace, brother Ryan. You're in Ohio. What city, good brother? I'm in Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. I ain't been to Columbus in almost ten years now. But go, go right ahead with your question, good brother. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be real quick. So my daughter, she is going to the fourth grade, and she's been in an all black private school now for, I would say, for the past, I would say, since my first grade. And they only, they only teach until middle school. So my question is, after she's done with that school, should me and her mother still look towards private black schools or is kind of winning her towards public schools kind of like... What, what, what grade does that private school go up to? I believe it only goes to fifth. Maybe six, but I believe it's fifth. So what y'all got to do is y'all got to start investigating the public schools, the private schools, and the charter schools in Columbus to see which one y'all think would be the best fit for her. Y'all got to do some research. Y'all got to get on the school district website and look at the public and charter school scores. Y'all got to go on the State Department of Education website and look at their public and charter school scores and the uh, write-ups and feedback and everything else that's being done for them. And then you want to look at some of the private schools in the area, go on their website, go to their open house, ask them some questions, see what the racial demographics is, the student demographics. Y'all got to do some research. Y'all got to get some brochures. Y'all got to make some phone calls and y'all going to have to go on some visits and go to some open houses, a lot of open houses. Get on the waiting list at some of the charter schools y'all might want her to be on because it might take a year for her to come up on that waiting list anyway. So y'all want to get on the waiting list now. How many more years she got at the school she's at? So she'll be going to the fourth now. So I say she has at least two more school years. She got at least two more. So by the end of this year, I would be looking to get her on a couple waiting lists for charter schools that are high achieving as well as for public schools that are high achieving. And then I would also investigate some of the private schools too. It's a shame to have to see her leave an independent black school. You know, maybe are they considering extending into middle school? That I'm not sure. I have to ask. Y'all might want to check with them. You know, I think if enough parents got together and say, listen, 
you know, we want our kids to stay with y'all for the next couple of years. Maybe they might be able, you know, they might consider it. I don't know what this situation is, but they might consider it. But either way, y'all got to be prepared for the worst. Right. So right. start start doing your research now. Okay. I, will, I absolutely will. And then I'll get with her mother. Then we'll, we'll talk some things up. Got you. All right, bro. I, I appreciate you, Dr. No problem, bro. Be safe. You too. All right. This is Maria from Chicago. My question is, once the child is in special ed, do they age out or remain in it for their entire education? <laughs> well, that's the same thing. Aging out and remaining in for your whole education, that's the same thing. Okay? Special ed begins at age three and it goes until age 21. Or high school graduation, whichever happens first. I repeat, special education begins at age three. That's your early intervention before first grade, before kindergarten. And special ed ends at age 21 or high school graduation, whichever occurs first. Now, to be blunt with you, 90% of black children in special ed will stay there until they graduate, if they graduate, unless their parents take them out of special ed. In most states, the only thing you have to do to exit a child from special ed is call an IEP meeting and do so. Dr. Umar, my name is Lavana. I'm the proud mother of three boys, two girls. I'm married, husband travels, oldest son, 17, lacks motivation, unless it's anime. Do you know of any organization in Maryland that caters to young men for something like that? I don't, but we can look for it. I know there was a big anime conference that just took place. Where was I at? I was just in a city that has an annual anime conference. This is what I would do if I were you. I would promise my son that I would take him to an annual anime conference if he achieves commensurate with my expectations for that school year. That could be a reward that he can earn at the end of the year. He must pass all classes with a B minus or higher, and he can go to the annual anime conference of his choosing as long as I can afford it. But what you're dealing with is lazy Negro syndrome. That's what this is. This is a spoiled boy who does what he wants, only wants to play video games or anime. Daddy's not there to enforce the discipline and mommy might be letting him get away with murder. We got to get the discipline together. But more importantly, when is daddy coming home and how often is daddy in the home? OK, Dr. Umar, my son is five, just started kindergarten. I'm a single mom. My son's teacher called me in for a meeting today, day two of school, discuss behavior. She says he's very respectful and sweet, doesn't like to sit at his desk or sit on the rug. He prefers to play with classroom toys all day. In my opinion, my son obviously needs to adapt to the structure. His teacher wants him to have a group session with the school counselor once a week. I'm fearful they will try to self-diagnose. No, couple things. Number one. Did we prepare him for public school by making him sit still at home in the chair five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time? Let me say this to all black parents raising black boys. Let me say this to all black parents with preschool age black boys. You have to prepare them to function in the classroom. These snow bunny teachers don't care to do it. And if your son can't sit still for 10 or 15 minutes at a time, they're going to try to force ADHD, medication, or special ed on you. So I think one of the problems here, we didn't prepare him for school. The first time he's been expected to sit down and listen without touching anything is in this classroom. 
So part of this is our fault. That's number one. Number two, you might have to hide.